good afternoon welcome back to zoology first year class the we are in the saqs the saqs already in the second lesson the saqs already uh, we completed the second lesson uh, second lesson uh, structural organization one question i uh, i didn't take that's why uh, i'll take that also this uh, supporting cells of the nervous system also important neuron already we discuss next uh, the we are in the actually we are in the animal diversity one but uh, i didn't explain in the structural organization this answer that's why first i complete this one afterwards i'll continue uh, to the animal diversity uh, one clear next uh, what it is means here the supporting cells of the nervous tissue the normally the nervous tissue the structural and functional units are the neurons the multipolar neuron structure we discuss next the uh, along with the neurons the nervous system this is having the neuron structural uh, and functional units neurons are present as well as supporting cells also present supporting cells are now we are going to discuss about the what the supporting cells are there we are, they, we are going to discuss supporting cells of the nervous tissue is called as a neuroglial cells clear simply we call as a these, uh, these are called as a neuroglial cells clear next they are the they are not conduct the in, uh, information that's why they are not uh, carrying the action potential or they are not carrying the information that's why we call as a non conducting cells they are not conducting the information next the they undergoes the division throughout same like a neurons these are also undergoes the division throughout life neurons also undergoes the division throughout life these supporting cells are neuroglial cells also the uh, th throughout the life they undergoes the division next the what about the in the cns in the cns what neuroglial cells are what supporting cells are there we are first we are going to discuss the first one is called as a oligodendrites clear what is the oligodendrite along with the neurons inside of the brain and spinal cord the cells are there that cells we called as a oligodendrites they form the myelin sheath clear they are forming the sheath that surrounding sheath myelinated neurons that we call as a uh, myelin sheath here yeah. next one is called as a astrocytes they are the star shaped here actually they are the like a star shaped structures astro, uh, astrocytes these astrocytes form the network that bind to the neurons these are connected the one neuron to another bind the neuron and the capillaries here neurons uh, the with the blood vessels they are uh, combined that's why we called as a, the they are blood brain barriers they are they are connected the neurons as well as blood cells which which uh, which one astrocytes the star shaped cells are present these cells are form the network that binds the neurons with the capillaries neurons and capillaries are connected by the astrocytes that's why these are called as a blood brain barriers astrocytes next is the third one is called as a ciliated ependymal cells here the what about the ciliated append uh, ependymal cells means they are the they are having the cilia they are covered inside of the uh, cns means inside of the brain cerebrospinal fluid is there na that places uh, uh, the ciliated uh, that is lined by the ciliated epithelium and also inside of the spinal cord also inner lining is uh, formed by the ciliated epithelial cells ciliated uh, uh, sorry not, not epithelial ependymal cells they line the uh, cavities the like ventricles means inside of the brain the spaces we call as brain is having the uh, spaces are there they are called the ventricles next the <coughs> ventricles of the brain and the help the movement of the cerebrospinal fluid <coughs> next one is the microglial cells they are the phagocytic cells means they are the engulf the any bacteria microbes are there that bacteria and microbes are bacteria microbes are uh, catch and uh, they are destroyed 
that is called as a mite. They are the phagocytic and the mesodermal in origin, and uh, they are helpful for the infection. Here, next, this one is about the CNS is having the which type of cells are there we, we discussed here. First one is called as the oligodendrites. They form the myelin sheath. Second one is called as the astrocytes. They are the star-shaped cells. They connect the neurons with the capillaries. That's why they are called as a blood-brain barriers. Next, third is called as a ciliated ependymal cells. They line the cavities of the brain as well as spinal cord cavity they are having. Next is the microglial cells. They are the phagocytic cells. They are unwanted. Any the microbes are enter inside of the cerebrospinal fluid that is uh, uh, destroyed by this one only. Here. Yeah. Next, the neuroglial cells of the PNS, peripheral nervous system. Before that, the CNS, which is present, we discussed. Next, in the C PNS, the two types of cells are present. They are uh, neuroglial cells are present. They are called as a satellite cells and the Schwann cells. What about the satellite cells means they are surrounding of the ganglions. Nerves are having the ganglions now. The ganglions are surrounded by the uh, ganglions are having the, for example, like this, the nervous system, the double ventral nerve cord is there. The ganglions are there. These ganglions are having the uh, um, neurons are there. Inside of the neurons, cell bodies are covered by the cell bodies are surrounded by the satellite cells. Here, next, what about the Schwann cells means they are forming the neurilemma of the, around the axons. Here, the, you observe the, see, the diagram of the nephron, just what is neurilemma? Means here, like this, the neuron, uh, rough diagram I'm drawing, but this is the axon is in a surrounding of the axon. The layer is there that we call as a neurilemma. Now that neurilemma is formed by this uh, Schwann cells only. Forming of the neurilemma around the axons, this in the peripheral nervous system, these are right. Here in the uh, CNS, the four types of the neuroglial cells are present. In the PNS, two are present, they are called as a satellite cells and the Schwann cells. This is also important in the uh, structural organization. That's why I've uh, taken this. Next one is the, next uh, we go to the animal diversity one. Next, uh, this is. Already we finished the primatoda and the anthozoans. Here, anthozoa and primatoda, both the questions we discussed. Next, uh, we are going to discuss about the polychaeta. General characters of polychaeta. The polychaeta, these are the which uh, the, this is, these are belongs to the phylum Anelida. Clear? The phylum Anelida, the class is the polychaeta. This polychaeta animals are all are the marine annelids. Here they are present in the salty water. That's why we call it a, these are the marine uh, marine annelids. They are commonly called as the common name every time. The uh, common name will be there. So here the common name of the polychaetes are called as a bristle worms are also called as a calm worms, bristle worms only. Here you don't, don't uh, write it the calm. Yeah, they are commonly called as a bristle worms. Here the many are the, all are actually, they are present inside of the marine water, but uh, and uh, some are uh, free moving, free moving forms. Other are the live in the tuberculosis. Tuberculosis means inside of the tubes, they can uh, survive and uh, Mostly they are the free living and uh, some are tuberculous means they are present inside of the tubes. Next is the, uh, uh, here the, observe the diagram, here the distinct head is present. Here the, see, the distinct head with sense organs, palps are present here, the clear, the um, palps and also eyes are present here, that's why the head is distinct before that, before the trematoda and uh, means the before animals, uh, uh, the means the, uh, platyhelminthes, nematyhelminthes, any uh, any animals you can take in that 
the head is not distinct but here from the annelids the distinct head is present with the sense organs like uh, the uh, eyes palps and tentacles are present here the ear the, the uh, that is the head is having the eyes palps and the tentacles are present here next is a special character here the parapodia or the locomotory organelles you observe here the v shape like this the structures are there now that structures we call as a leg like structures are there they are called as a parapodia these parapodia ended with the small thread like structures they are called as a cete are present here like this thread like structures are present they are called as a cete c ending with the cete leg uh, the leg like structures are present they are called as a parapodia parapodia is ends with the cete these are called as a cete <coughs> see the parapodia is a locomotory organelle parapodia helpful in the respiration in addition to the gills means they are helpful in the locomotion these leg like structures are there na leg like structure normally they are helpful in the locomotion additionally they are help in the help in the respiration also they are having the gills additional to the gills they are performing the respiration next is the clitellum and gonoducts are absent what is the clitellum means the any the annelida organisms you can take the for example earthworm and the leech any one you can take the center you are observing or not the center one belt like structure is there band like structure will be there that structure in the earthworm uh, the 14 15 16 segments uh, the belt like structure is there that we call as a clitellum or also called as a cingulum clitellum or cingulum it is use, uh, useful in the formation of the cocoon cocoon formation time this one is mainly helpful the that is the clitellum here clitellum and the gonoducts what is a gonoduct gamete gathering duct we call as a gonoducts clitellum is absent as well as gonoducts are also absent and these are the you name the main uh, gonoducts are absent means they are directly the gametes are released in, inside of the coelom the annelids are having the schizophilom is present inside of the coelom they are producing the gametes that's why here the gonoducts are absent next uh, they are the unisexual or dioecious means uh, mostly they are the uh, unisexual or, uh, organisms and uh, next is the sex cell, um, the sex cells are released uh, or gametes sex cells means gametes are released uh, in the coelom already said coelom and uh, passes out through the nephridiopores means the gametes for the gamete releasing purpose gamete ga gathering purpose the gonoducts are absent that's why the gametes are released inside of the coelom that from that coelom they are comes out by the the skin is having nephridiopores clear this one next is the fertilization is uh, external only the gametes are coming out means the fertilization is external only the larva the development is a uh, uh, indirect only they are having the larva that we call as a trochophore larva is present here the example is neris here are also called as commonly we call as a sandworm here this one is about the polyketa poly means normally in the name only there poly means mini keta means cete keta means cete here this one is about the polyketa so commonly we call as a brazil worms they are mar marine uh, they are uh, marine aquatic animals they are free move some are free moving and some are present in the tuberculous it is distinct with the eyes tentacles and palps the main is the parapodia is present parapodia with the cete the parapodia is helpful in the locomotion as well as respiration along with the gills and the which is absent clitellum is absent as well as gonoducts are absent gonoducts are absent that's why gametes are released in, into the coelom passed out by the nephridiopore next is the fertilization is uh, outside they occur that is called external fertilization development is indirect the larva is the trochophore larva this is about the polyketa here example is neris next uh,
Next is the phyla arthropoda. Under the phyla arthropoda, two important SAQs are there. The first one is the crustaceans. Here, crustaceans. The crustaceans also aquatic mandibulate arthropod. Mandible is present. That's why we call it a mandibulate arthropod. Crustaceans are the belongs to the phylum arthropoda. They are the aquatic arthropoda animals are all are not aquatic. Some are aquatic and some are the terrestrial animals. Here, next is the here the these are the aquatic mandibulate arthropods and the head thorax will be fused. The in the cockroach, you can take head is different, thorax is different, abdomen is different. But in this, the head, the head plus thorax, head and thorax combine and form it as a common structure that is called as a cephalothorax. Cephalothorax. See this one. The head thorax used to form it as a cephalothorax. The cephalothorax is covered by the, in some, some animals, cephalothorax is covered by the hard exoskeleton present, which is formed by the calcium carbonate. Here, that we call as a carapace. Here, cephalothorax is covered by the shell-like structure that is called as a, that is made up of with the calcium carbonate, that we call as a carapace. Here, carapace is present. Here, next, the head region. The head region is having the means cephalothorax. Head region means cephalothorax. The head region is having the, the four pairs of the appendages are present here. The four pairs of appendages are present. What are they? Means the, they are the antennae. Means uh, the antennules, not antennae, antennules. Antennae, the one pair of the antennules are present. The one pair of antennae is present and the mandibles are present. And the first pair of maxillae, second pair of maxillae. Here, like this, the means here the antennule means above the antennae, the structures are there that we call the antennules. Here, this one is the one pair, the mandibles are the one pair, and the this one is the first pair of maxillae, second total, the the antennule for five pairs of appendages are present. Antennule is the one pair, antennae one pair, mandibles, the first pair of maxillae. Second pair of maxillae. Here, like this, how many? Four, uh, five pairs of appendages are present on the head. Next is the uh, thoracic and abdominal appendages are biramus. The you observe this one, prawn. This is the uh, all of you uh, know about this one, prawn. It is having the carapace like this. I will draw the uh, simple rough diagram here. This one is the backside, this abdominal region, like this, it is having. The, in this, the biramus means the abdominal region is having the biramus legs are present. Here, like this, the biramus legs are present in the abdominal region. Here, the antennae and uh, antennules and the mandibles are present and the maxillae are present like this. Here, the means the abdominal region is having the uh, thoracic and abdominal appendages are biramus. The, here the cephalothorax means head and thorax is combined and formed. Next one is called as a which one? The uh, this uh, sorry that uh, thoracic region. Here also thoracic region also they are having the appendages that we call as a uh, biramus means they are bifurcated into two. Next the respiratory organs are gills. Gills is called as a branchiae. Here these are also called as a branchiae. Next uh, excretory glands are green glands or antennary glands. Here in the crustaceans, the excretion is occur by the green glands or antennary glands. Next is the sense organs. Already we discussed antennules, antennae, sense organs are antennae, compound eyes, and the statosis. Next, the development is uh, indirect and the number of larval forms are present. Before that, polyketa is having the only one larval form that is called as a trochophore larva, but it in this also indirect development is occur. The several larval forms are present in this. Here, the example is polymon, that is a fresh water prawn, cancer, that's the scientific name of the crab, and daphnia, water flea. Here, these are the examples for the crustaceans. The mainly crustaceans are the aquatic mandibulate arthropods.
normally they are terrestrial and aviation animals this only the crustaceans are the aquatic mandibulate arthropods head thorax is fused and form it as a cephalothorax the cephalothorax is covered by the calcium carbonate shell that we call as a carapace and the uh, uh, inside of the head the, uh, the head region the sense organs are there the five pairs of sense organs are there they are called as a one pair of antennules one pair of antennae one pair mandibles first pair of maxillae second pair of maxillae like this five pairs of the appendages are present and the thoracic and abdominal appendages in the head region like this in the thoracic region and the abdominal region number of biramous uh, appendages are present next is the respiratory organs are branchiae or gills next the excretory organs are green glands or the antennary glands next is the sense organs the antennae compound eyes and the special here the stratos is also present development uh, the is indirect having the several larval forms this is about the the uh, arthropoda first one crustaceans next next one is the uh, arachnids next one is a class arachnida general characters of class arachnida simply arachnida means the example is uh, the crustacea means the example is the fresh water prawn next the uh, keep it in the mind the arachnida means uh, the which one is means the spider and scorpion any one here the spider or scorpion scorpion both of them are belongs to arachnida what it is means they are the before that aquatic mandibulate arthropods they are but here these arachnids are the mainly the terrestrial chelicerate arthropods mandibulate in that mandibulate arthropods these are the terrestrial chelicerate arthropods here next the their body is divided into prosoma and opisthoma here see this one the spider you observe here the prosoma is a and the opisthoma head is combined with the thorax and form it as a prosoma and the next one is called as a opisthoma here prosoma this one is called as a opisthoma this one is a prosoma and the opisthoma prosoma has the six pairs of appendages are present here the like a thorax region here the six pairs of like a thorax the six pairs of appendages are present and uh, the what are they means one pair of chelicerae uh, one pair of pedipalp four pairs of walking legs here the means uh, here it is a uh, total six pairs of appendages are present here and uh, three four walking legs this one is the uh, chelicerae first one the next one is called as a pedipalp pedipalp like this here it is pedipalp the four pairs of walking legs are present here yeah? like this the a pair of chelicerae is the first pair second pair is a pedipalp the present like this next is the four pairs of walking legs are present here yeah? next the uh, in the spiders mainly the spinnerets are present the spinnerets of the spider secrete the spider silk spider secretion is there that gelatinous they forming the web here that is the spinnerets of spider secrete the spider silk the spinnerets are modified the abdominal appendages here the prosoma and the thoracic region only they are having the appendages but abdomen is doesn't have the appendages na that appendages are modified as a spinnerets in the spider they are secreting the the what it is here spider silk they are producing means uh, they are for, for the forming of the web that one is useful here next one is the respiratory organs are book lungs in the scorpion all of you know this one 
book lungs and the trachea in the some spiders here the respiratory organs the some uh, some uh, spiders are having the uh, uh, book lungs uh, as well as the trachea also some are having the only the trachea is having in the spiders the scorpion is having the book lungs here next the respiratory pigment is a copper containing hemocyanin here respiratory pigment is the in the there also in the cockroach also hemocyanin is there here also the respiratory pigment is a hemocyanin that is containing the copper uh, the contain copper salt here next is the excretory organs are the here the before that green glands and antennary glands crustaceans are having the green glands and antennary glands here the particularly cockroach you learn about this one cockroach digestive system the the arthropods are mainly having the malpighian tubules and the coxal glands are present excretory organs are malpighian tubules and the coxal glands here next the development is the direct means no larval forms before that indirect several larval forms are present in the crustacean the development is uh, indirect and several larval stages are present but in this development is direct no larval stages are present here next scorpions are the viviparous they directly the they are not laying that they are they are directly giving the young ones that's why the scorpions are called as a viviparous here the i am briefing ones see these are the terrestrial kelicerate arthropods body is divisible into two prosoma and opisthoma prosoma is having opisthoma doesn't have abdomen part prosoma is having six pairs of appendages are there one pair is the first pair is a kelicerate second pair is a pedipal remaining four pairs are the walking legs walking legs next is a spinnerets are spinnerets uh, of the spider secreting the spinner web here spinner silk is secreting these are the the spinnerets are the modified abdominal appendages next the respiratory organs are book lungs or trachea respiratory pigment is hemocyanin containing the copper ions next the excretory organs are mainly the malpighian tubules and the uh, uh, coxal glands are present the development is indirect no larval forms scorpions are the viviparous example is polymnius or the arenia and also called as a the fresh mite here yeah. this one is about the arachnida next next the the difference between the centipede and the millipede it is also belongs to the arthropoda only the 
difference between the millipede and the centipede here the centipedes and what is the difference between major difference means they are having the hundreds of uh, the legs are present in this one the uh, thousands of legs is present in the millipedes here millipedes and centipedes are the mandibulate arthropods they are having the mandibles that's why we call as a mandibulate arthropods centipedes are belongs to the belongs to the class chilopoda the centipedes are they are having the hundreds of the be means the 10 to 100 below the 100 the legs are there that's why we call as a centipede they are belongs to the class chilopoda here chilopoda which one the centipedes Next, the millipedes are belongs to the diplopoda. Here, they are millipedes are belongs to diplopoda. Next, the centipedes are having the hundred leggers. Already said, the ten to hundred legs are present. The hundred leggers. The millipedes are the thousand leggers. They are having the thousands of legs are present, and the centipedes are having the hundreds of legs are present. The bro both groups are terrestrial and air breathing. They can breathe the air with the gills here. And the mainly they are the terrestrial animals. They are present on the land. Next, the body of the both the groups is divided into the head and the trunk. Here, their body is the millipede and centipede. Both of them are the body is divisible into head and trunk. Next, uh, in chilopoda means in the centipedes. The segments are having the one pair of legs only present. See this one here. I'm draw the diagram centipede. Right. See this one. Like this simple diagram I am drawing here. Here the each and every segment is having the each and every segment is having the only one one pair of legs are present. But with but in the uh, millipede, they are having the the two pairs of legs are present. See this one, not par like this parapodia. Yeah? The segmented legs are present. Means the arthropoda means the jointed legs are present in this. Just simply, I am mean drawing like this. Each and every segment is having the one pair of legs are present. These are the centipedes are the. 100 leggers each. See, the chilopoda, each segment has a one pair of, they are provided with the class. Edge ending is having the class are present. That's why the clawed appendages are present in the chilopoda. Chilopoda, each segment has one pair of clawed appendages present. In diplopoda, each segment has the Two pairs of appendages, the jewelers, example jewelers you can take in that what will happen? The two, the each and every segment is having the two, two pairs, two pairs of the appendages are present. Here, centipedes, the, they have the poisonous class. Here, the, if it is a centipede, the first uh, claw, first pair of the leg is having the class now, that class, the poisonous class, first pair of the trunk appendages, the, they are having the here there are no poisonous class in the millipede here centipedes are having the poisonous class which one first trunk appendage first trunk appendage of it as a poisonous class in the millipede no poisonous class are present here next uh, in millipedes maxillae modified into nathocilarium Nathocilarium is formed, the, which is absent in the centipedes. Here, in this, the centipedes, the uh, millipedes, nathocilarium is present in the centipedes, it is absent. Next, the both of them are having the respiratory organs are the trachea. Trachea are the respiratory organs, excretory organs are same, the malfusion tubules are present, the centipedes are the carnivorous, they are the Carnivorous animal, millipedes are the herbivores. They, they can take the detritus. That's why we call as a, they are the, uh, I will uh, just simply, I'll uh, 
make it as a chart like i will explain see this one is a centipede and this one uh, here i am taking as a millipede the space is not there that's why i write it like this the next word it is the uh, they both of them are the mandibulate mandibulate arthropods mandibulate arthropods these are these are also same both of them are mandibulate arthropods centipedes are belongs to the which one which uh, which order phylopoda they are belongs to the phylopoda class this one is belongs to the diplopoda here next the both of them are terrestrial and air breathing they are the terrestrial air breathing is also same terrestrial and air breathing next the body the body of the both divided into head and trunk here both of them uh, in the both the body is divisible into head and the trunk here also same belongs to next the phylopoda the here the the poisonous poisonous class are present first pair poisonous class are present no poisonous class here no poisonous poisonous class poisonous class are absent in the millipedes here next is the the millipedes are having uh, the inside of the millipedes netho kylarium g silentio netho netho kylarium is present in this one no netho kylarium is absent means absence of absent netho kylarium is absent remaining i am write it here the both of them are the uh, they are having the respiratory organs are both of them are having the trachea in this also having the trachea in this also respiratory organs are trachea is present and the excretory organs are malpighian tubules malpighian tubules in this also same malpighian tubules are present and the centipedes are the carnivorous they are the carnivorous are carnivores these these are the herbivores here yeah, this one is about the difference between the millipedes and centipede and uh, next we are going to take next is a q next follow to rider before that a keen idea is there i will check wait now next is a keen idea here are echinoids here in this mainly this is a echinodermata under the phylum echinoid echinoidea is the class under the echinodermata and uh, the 
body their body forms are either semi globe or disk like they are having the majorly they are having the semi globular round structures are also called as a disk like here yeah. next is a they are having the movable spines here yeah. the spines over the body of the means they are containing the movable spines are present body is surrounded by the movable spines next is the arms are absent here movable spines only present arms are absent here next is the calcareous arms are absent two feet bears the succus means that the two feet is having the two feet are having the for the attachment purpose the succus are present next the above the body the calcareous ossicles unite to form as a the surrounding disc like structure that we call as a test or cornea see this one calcareous ossicles means plate like structures these all are combined and form it as a the surrounding the structure is formed that we call as a test that is called as a the here it is for corona or also called as a case or also called as a test here these are surrounding of the the ossicles are surrounded here the calcareous ossicles are combine the plate like structures above the uh, body the plate like structures are there they are called as a calcareous ossicles all are combined and form it as a outer side the test is formed and are also called as a this test is also called as a case or also called as a corona here that is here next is the madreporite is a and anus is aboral oral side and the aboral side will be there here in the aboral side down the which one is present the madreporite the whole uh, uh, yeah whole is present that we call as a madreporite and also anus is present where in the aboral side here madreporite and uh, anus are the aboral side next is the inside the body cavity number of umbilical grooves are present inside of that groove like structures are present these groove like structures are closed means the in some the umbilical grooves are open but here the umbilical grooves are closed here next is the here the madreporite where it is present in the aboral side anus and madreporite is present next the umbilical grooves are closed and the pedicellaria means on, on the skin number of jaw like structures are present they are uh, the pedicellaria the spine like structures they are having the three jaws are present the pedicellaria is having the three jaws the special character this one is important for the vsaq as well as the saq the this one is aristotle lantern what it is means the sea urchins echinites uh, uh, mainly echinites are called is commonly called as a sea urchins here the aristotle lantern is the five jawed masticatory apparatus where it is present in the sea urchins here the sea urchins the mouth the mouth is having the five jawed masticatory apparatus is present five jawed masticatory means for the chewing of the food they are useful that's why we call as a mastication that is called as a the aristotle aristotle in uh, aristotle lantern is a five jawed masticatory apparatus present mouth of the sea urchin here mouth of the sea urchin the five jawed masticatory apparatus is present that we called as a aristotle lantern clear that is absent in the only heart urchins the all are called as a echinoids all are called as a 
urchins, especially the hard urchins are not having the aristotle lantern. Here, the in the sea urchin mouth is having the one apparatus, five jawed apparatus is present, masticatory apparatus is present that we call as the aristotle lantern that is useful for the mastication of the food that is absent in the heart urchin sphere. Next one is the larva is a, the development is indirect. The larva is the echinopluteus larva is present inside of this one. Here, this is about the next uh, example is the echinus sea urchin. Here, the, the echino discus that is called as a sand dollar. Clear? Like this, any one example, you write it that we call as a echinoids. Here, echinoids are mainly belongs to the phylum echinodermata. They are having the mainly disc like are also called as a semi globular structure. The movable spines are present, arms are absent, and the uh, two feet is having the suckers. The calcareous ossicles are combined and form it as a uh, one structure that is called as a test case or corona and the this one is the openings which openings madriporite and anus both of them are present in the down aboral side and the umbilical grooves are the uh, inside of the uh, above the body umbilical grooves are present they are closed in other echinoderms umbilical grooves some echinoderms umbilical grooves are opens out next the Pedicillaria area is uh, above the uh, surface of the body. Number of pedicillaria area is present. That is having the three jaws are present. Here, yeah. Aristotle lantern already said, see urchin's mouth is having the five jawed masticatory apparatus that we call as a Aristotle lantern that is absent in the hot urchin. Development is indirect, having the echinopluteus larva. Example, echinus and the echino discus that is called as a sand dollar. This one. Next is the last one. Next one more is there. Holothuridium. This is that is also belongs to the phylum. Echinodermata. Okay, almost uh, time is up. I will take uh, tomorrow's class. The, up to here only, the holothuridia is left in the animal diversity one. I will tomorrow, I will take this one along with the animal diversity two. We will meet tomorrow.